Hello everyone. So in the first lecture, we have got an overview on what we are going to learn in this course. Now let's get started. We'll learn some fundamental and important things in this lecture, including setting up Python, importing libraries, importing data set, plotting data, and applying linear regression with single variable. So what do we do in machine learning in simple words? In every case, we start with a bunch of data as we are seeing here. And then we try to fit it with a trend line. And then we see if our trend line makes sense or performs well for a data set. And then we can predict for any other arbitrary data. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say we have this data set, very simple, one independent column, one dependent. Let's say you want to buy a house and uh, exploring the market. And uh, you have some data probably from some friends who have bought recently or from other database that you have access to. You can see that there are uh, several houses and more the square footage, the price here is. Uh, that makes sense. I mean, the bigger the house is, the price here it would be. Now, if you can find a reasonable correlation between the square footage and the price, then you can predict any house's price uh, given that you have a square footage. Let's say you like a house and you know the footage, square footage, but the seller is asking for a very high price. You can fit that particular piece of data in your rule of correlation and see whether he's asking for a reasonable price or not. It would be more convenient if we could put this in a graph, right? Well, we can do this in Excel or any program that can handle numbers, but let's do this in Python. By the way, if you don't have any background on Python, don't worry, you can explore two playlists on my channel where I have discussed Python concepts where you can learn Python the easiest way and uh, Python drills where you can practice on real coding problems. You can also explore the Python project playlist uh, where you can make a full Python project step by step. Now, back to business. Let's say you don't have, you don't have Python in your PC. Uh, you can just download Anaconda package. Yeah, I have already uh, downloaded and installed it, Anaconda Navigator. You just uh, Google search for uh, Anaconda package and it will install everything required to run Python in your machine, including Jupyter Notebook. Uh, yeah, so this is the Jupyter Notebook. You can say uh, you can see that it's mentioning Anaconda 3 in parentheses. That is it, the Jupyter Notebook, uh, the coding environment in which we are going to code. It comes with the Anaconda 3 package. And... Uh, uh, after you download the Anaconda package, it will install everything required to run Python in your machine, including Jupyter Notebook, where we will do the coding. After installing, you just open up Jupyter Notebook and it will open up a tab in your browser like this. Uh, now you click New Python 3. Uh, the opening window will, will look like this. You click New Python 3 and it will open a new tab where you, you will see a code block where you can uh, start coding. Um, that's it, uh, uh, you are ready to write a code. By the way, this is not the only way. There are tons of ways to run Python in a machine, but to me is the easiest and most convenient way to do it without going through so much hassle. And uh, another word on dataset, you can get access to a lot of datasets for practice on Kaggle, just, uh, open an account there, search for your topic, and then uh, uh, you will find that people have already made a ton of datasets uh, there that you can download and use. For example, you can like make a quick search house, house price versus square footage, house price versus something, a stock market health, sales dataset, this, this is the trending searches, or other uh, popular things. There are tons of datasets on every uh, possible topic. And you can also do like coding and competitions, etc. So it's a very uh, useful website if you want to uh, get uh, different datasets for practice. Now let's get back to our tutorial. Our dataset is this. And uh, it's saved as a CSV file, as you can see, the name houseprice.csv and uh, meaning column separated values. And this is a common format for dataset. These can come in various formats like CSV, XLSX, that is Excel file, or just as a native text file, .txt. Now, where is it saved? In my machine, it's saved here. Users, then my name, and desktop in ML. Uh, I have made a folder in my desktop where this is located. 
And uh, first we'll set up our directory in the coding. Uh, we're in the Jupyter Notebook. First thing we have to do is to set up the directory. We import the OS module and uh, then we use this command. We just uh, copy the directory, this one, and just paste it here in the parenthesis. So uh, just make sure that you notice the double slash format. Uh, you just edit it like this so that the so that Python will know that your uh, directory is this, this folder. And uh, when you read any, when you try to read any data set, it will read from this folder. So it will not show any error. The next thing is libraries. What's that? Libraries contain functions and commands to make your tasks easy. Let's say you want to do some numerical calculation. If you uh, use some built-in library regarding that, you don't have to write anything on your own. Rather, you just call the function from the library and it will do the job for you. And your code will be uh, shorter and cleaner. And if you need plotting, you just use a library regarding plotting and it will make plotting easier for you. So we'll leverage that resources as there are tons of built-in libraries in Python. In our case, we want to use a data set. We want to deal with numbers and we want to plot the data. So we will import these three directories, numpy uh, and uh, pyplot and pandas. Uh, numpy for numbers, pyplot for plotting, uh, specifically matplotlib function from pyplot. So we have we have to write it like this, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And uh, we have imported pandas as we are uh, dealing with dataset, uh, so many functions will be uh, conveniently available in this uh, module. And then we can bring in our dataset. It's named this, houseprice.csv, as we have seen. Uh, we just use the pandas to read the CSV file. So we just write pd.readcsv. So basically it's enabling us to read the our, our data set from the directory. We have set up the directory. We have imported the module that can read the data data set. And then we are, uh, we are reading the, that particular data set and we are naming it as DF. Uh, Pandas actually uh, save this in this coding environment as a uh, data frame. So uh, we can name it in short DF, or you can use any arbitrary name as you want. So. Now, uh, if we want to see the data set, uh, if we want to see the data frame, then we just have to uh, run uh, this command, df, the name actually. Uh, if you run this, you can see that we can see exactly our data set here. Uh, two columns, square footage versus price. If it's 100 square foot, uh, 100 square feet, it's 1,000, uh, whatever currency it is. Let's say 200 is 2,000, it's, if it's seven. 100, 7,000, uh, 1,000, it's uh, 10,600, something like that. Now, uh, what does our data set tell you? There is a square footage column, which is independent, right? It doesn't depend on anything. What about the price? It is dependent. It depends on the uh, square footage. So the independent variable, generally we call it as X or feature is square footage and dependent is price or generally called Y or output. Uh, these are the terminologies we'll frequently use, so you may take a note here. We haven't done any machine learning yet. You may ask, where's the machine learning here? But bear with me, before doing any machine learning, uh, before implementing any machine learning algorithm, we have to understand the data set, the math, and then comes the coding. So we have the data set here, uh, and we want to see the data. We want to visualize the data by a graph. Let's plot it. We'll use the PLT function to create a square, uh, to create a scatter plot. But before that, let's define the variables. Uh, the independent variable X is the square footage. So we take the data frame, we take the particular column in our data frame and call it as X. So when we run uh, this, uh, it will show only the square footage column, which is our independent uh, column, and then uh, also Y. Uh, it is the, uh, we take our data frame, we call the price column as Y. So if we call Y, it will show this column. Now, uh, coming back to visualizing, we use the PLT. 
plt.scatter to make a uh, scatter graph. Uh, and what will be the scatter graph? The uh, first thing that we call would be the x. And the second thing that we call would be the y. So it will plot uh, square footage versus price. Um, and uh, the next two lines are basically setting up the names of the of the axis, the x label and the y label. And if we run this, it will generate this graph. Now, when we plot the graph, it shows the points here. What does it tell you? Uh, let's remember that we, we want to see a trend line, right? We can draw many trend lines through here, but what is the simplest one that makes sense? A linear one perhaps, right? So let's say that we can define the correlation between the square footage and price by a line. We could have done other things like drawing a curve, a second or third degree, etc. But for now, let's say that this is a fairly simple correlation uh, and uh, how we can draw a trend line. Let's say that uh, in the CSV file, we have the points like this. I have actually just made a simplified graph, the same graph, uh, uh, a scatter plot in Excel. And uh, I have just put a line through here. Uh, you can see that this, this is just an image of a line. I have just drawn a line through here. So uh, it actually touches many of the points here. Some are a bit deviated, but uh, let's say it's kind of a good fit, right? Um, if I put it right here. So what I have just done is called linear regression or uh, linear fit to a data set. We have a data and we have uh, a sense that it's kind of a linear correlation between the price and the uh, uh, square footage. So we have done this, uh, but here comes the follow-up question, a very uh, obvious question. How do we know that this line is correct? How do we actually draw this line? We, we could have drawn thousands of lines like this, right? We could have drawn it like this. We could have drawn like this. We could have drawn like this. Yeah, the inclination could be anywhere. The intercept could be anywhere. So uh, when we draw a line, it has an inclination and it has an intercept with the axis. So uh, basically its uh, equation is y is equals to mx plus c. In every, uh, for every x, if you want to calculate the y, the, the relation, if it's for a line, the equation of the line is y is equals to mx plus c. Uh, fairly basic uh, math, if you remember. And the m is the slope, that is the inclination, and c is the intercept. So if we have an x that is a square footage, we can uh, just put it on the line and uh, we can just calculate the y as this. So how do we know, uh, uh, coming back to our question, how do we know that this line is actually correct? How do we draw the best fit line? So this is done by this method, least square method. What we do is actually we create, uh, we calculate the distance of each point. Let's say we have how many points here? 10 points, right? We calculate the distance of the of each point from the line and then square it and sum it. For this particular curve, it has a summarized value. You know, uh, if we uh, get the distance from this point, if we get the distance from this point and calculate the distance from all of the 10 points and square them and sum them, we get a value, let's say 100. Then uh, if we have any other fitting line like this, like this, like this, like this, for every line we can, uh, we, we will have a summer, we have a sum value, right? So list square method is uh, the method in which we try to calculate uh, this sum for every possible line going through the data set. And we select the line that shows the least value for the sum. So basically we calculate all the distances of the data points from the line. And we choose the particular line uh, that actually shows the least value of the sum. So if we have three lines, let's say line one, line two, 
and line three. Let's say for line two, the value is the least one. Then we will see that this is our particular line. So this is the linear regression for single variable because we have just one uh, independent variable and one dependent variable. And uh, this is by using the selection of the line is uh, done by least square method. So we can our, define our method as linear curve fitting with single variable. Now we have just learned the name of the simplest machine learning algorithm. Under the hood, machine learning just runs different algorithms which are based on mathematical or statistical principles. We may think that it's all coding. We obsess over learning the coding and et cetera, the syntax, how to write the code, but fundamentally it's all math. But don't worry, don't freak out. I'll explain everything to you. Now let's get back to the code. Uh, we want to fit a line. Uh, we want to fit a line uh, to our data and predict what happens to the price, which is called linear regression. Uh, so what happens in linear regression? Uh, we have just uh, seen this, uh, that by least square regression, we can find a particular trend line for our data set. Now the math is done. We do the coding now for which we're eagerly waiting, right? We have 10 data points. What we'll do is that we divide our data set into two parts, uh, training and test. Why? Well, we want to train our data with our method. We have a method. Uh, we have uh, agreed that we are going to fit our data to a line. So we know our method. We want to train our data with, uh, with our method. So we randomly take most of our data for training with our model. And then we use the rest of the data to test whether our method is working or not, and hence the names, uh, training set and test set. We're doing linear regression and we use some data to feed the data to a line and then test the rest with that line. For this, we use another library, scikit-learn, which is a particularly popular uh, machine learning uh, uh, data, database or environment, whatever you want to call it. So scikit-learn uh, actually provides uh, so many models and algorithms. So it's called sklearn. From there, we uh, get model selection. So the syntax would be this, from sklearn dot model selection, we import train test split. Why? Because we want to split our data set. Our data set uh, has 10 sets of data. We want to split it into two parts, one train set and one test set. So it, uh, and uh, we will get like uh, four sets of variables, X train, X test, Y train, X, uh, Y test. When we divide our uh, data set into two sets, train set and test set, we'll get X train and Y train in the training set and X test and Y test in our test set. And uh, what is our test size? Uh, we want to keep most of our data for training and we want to test the rest of the data. We, so we keep just like 20% of our data. For, uh, so the test size is two. So randomly it will uh, take eight, of, eight out of 10 for training and the rest two will be uh, for test. So if we run the X training, you, you can see that it has randomly chosen uh, eight values. And uh, if we see X test, the rest of uh, the rest are for testing. Similarly for Y train, randomly has taken uh, the eight corresponding values of X train would be Y train and the randomly chosen uh, corresponding values of X test will be Y test. Now, actually uh, we, we want to apply linear regression. A another uh, function called linear regression will be imported from sklearn.linear model. There will be so many models, but we want to uh, import linear regression, which is included in the linear model set. So we import linear regression. And then let's say we uh, call it as reg. And then what we do, we have training data and test data. We just fit our data, the training data into this reg, that is the regression algorithm. We feed our training data into the regression algorithm. And then let's say uh, after we run it, can we predict anything? 
Yes. So after we feed our data into the linear regression, regression algorithm, we can actually predict what would be the X test uh, for this. Uh, what would uh, what would be the uh, Y values for the X test? Remember, we're uh, we are training eight out of ten X values, so we can predict uh, the values for the remainder, the test for testing. Okay, we can predict. If we run that, you can see that there are two values, 10,022.5, 5,032.5. So when we fit, we can get some predicted values. Now we want to see how well fit is this. Uh, we want to compare the real data and predicted data. So basically we have to plot two graphs. One is the actual data that we have. That is the scatter plot that we have already done. But let's mark it in color red in plus sign, uh, however you want to put it. So square footage and price, the actual data we plot first. And then we put the label and the uh, title of the graph. Then comes the second data. We want to uh, put the predicted data on top of the actual data. So predicted data would be the line because we are doing the linear regression. And you can see that it's kind of nicely fit because you can see that most of the data points are actually touching our prediction curve. Now, uh, you have just successfully done the linear regression for single variable. And uh, next comes the question, let's say you are actually in the market trying to find uh, a house for you, suitable house for you, and you have found one. Let's say it's 820 square foot square feet now you have the data for 700 you have the data for 800 you have the data for 900 but you don't have the data for 820 how would you know that uh, what would be uh, what would be a reasonable price for an 820 square feet so you you basically you run this algorithm and you predict a particular arbitrary value 820 you use the reg.predict function uh, and put 820 it will calculate 800 uh, 8226.1 how about any other value can we predict for let's say uh, 1500 yes we can uh, we just have to change the value here run and it will be 15,012.5. So it will use this linear regression and using this linear regression you can predict uh, the price for any arbitrary square footage. So that's how uh, we can actually predict uh, any price of house. So summarizing uh, we have learned so many things, so many fundamental things that will come in handy in the following lectures. We have learned how to set up Python, how to import libraries, how to import the data set, how to uh, visualize the data set. Then we learn the coding procedure for the linear regression with single variable. We have a data set, we feed a line to our data, we learn the math behind it, we plot this, we apply machine learning algorithm, specifically linear regression with single variable. So what's next? Well, we have Kaggle. Try, uh, you can try different uh, linear regression uh, and see if we can regenerate linear regression curve for other data sets. Hope it's helpful. See you in the next lecture. Thanks.